The last few weeks have been preparing us for this exact moment. The best of five grand finals of the BTS Pro Series Season 14 here in Southeast Asia. I'm Harry Freak, with me is Skips, and we are bringing you the best of five grand finals, a series for the championship be here between Talon and Fnatic. We did have a little bit of a delay. Junoel, he got his uh, power down, then he got it back up, kickstarted that one, and he is ready to play. Kips, we are going to be having a full lineup of Fnatic, full lineup of Talon. Who do you uh, see as the favorite in this one? I mean, Talon's got to be the favorite, right? These guys, we literally moved the entire day so they could get on their plane to the major. These, that is these true. are this is the team to beat this is the team that sent everybody packing so far blacklist got a single game off of them and that was a hour plus fight to get one map one map and Fnatic haven't exactly looked the best recently it's not a not a secret that you know this is the last time the last ride that they're going to be making under this flag so yeah if but we did see Fnatic show up in a different form this morning versus Blacklist. We did see a Fnatic that had their drafts in order, that had their tempo in order, that had lineups that fitted better with their like seemingly chill playstyle. So while Talon is absolutely favorite here for me, I do wonder if Fnatic can't throw them some curveballs. Uh, we're hoping that uh, this is gonna be the case. Uh, the draft said, yeah, I don't want to work for the grand finals, but uh, the production is so awesome and so fast to fix the problem, so we get it here on the screen. There is not gonna be any problems here, Kips, in our best of five grand finals, and we are gonna be, a, be seeing a hero that we haven't seen today. It is gonna be an HS Prophet as a first pick for Talon. Mm -hmm. I mean, haven't seen today, but we've been seeing plenty of this guy recently, right? True. I just want the leash talent to go away. I think we're all going to be a lot happier when that level 20 gets changed. The rest of it is annoying, is oppressive, his laning is good, his scaling is good, but it was always like that. But he didn't get this massive power boost on level 20 before. And that still for me feels the issue with the hero. Yeah, and also we are, uh, Nature's Prophet has insane talent level 20 and level 25. There are some heroes, you know, who don't get changed all that much in either. There are some that get changed in one of those, but the NHS Prophet, like level 20, he becomes insane. Level 25, he uh, just becomes unbearable. But Fnatic, they're gonna get a Magnus and the Rubik. This is gonna be their response to the NHS Prophet. Like it, hate it, any uh, any thoughts? In DJ and KP on the, on the Skira back lane? Love it, of course. We're going into the Tusk immediately, so this might be a support, this might be a core. Um, as far as like the Rubik goes, you do have some decent spells to steal from him, but Tusk is a great save versus RP, for example, um, and does not care too much in general for uh, for backline support. So actually, he does care. He'll go for them. So yeah, good pickup for the first phase. Um, they're gonna ban out the Monkey King, which is a great hero with the Magnus, great hero against the Nature's Prophet. I'm uh, expecting potential Clockwork bans here. If you don't want your uh, Nature's Prophet to be hunted down, Fnatic, they have played that uh, played that one in the past, and it wouldn't surprise me to see a Clockwork uh, Morphling lane, something along those lines here for Fnatic. That would be a, a solid approach, but we'll see. We'll see where it uh, takes them. Fnatic, they don't want to be playing against the Slark, so they are thinking this is a uh, off-lane Nature's Prophet. Yep, they are. Of course, that doesn't mean that it actually is. They're just guarding the lane that they have right now as much as possible. Um, and this this Nature's Prophet could very well still be going into the hands of 23 nonetheless. That is true. I think both you and me have casted a series where Talon played the Nature's Prophet in the offlane and in the uh, safe lane as well. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what happens there. There's been a lot of, you know... Uh, after Fnatic dropped to Division 2, um, a lot of bashing mm -hmm. on Gabby, maybe even in the uh, past couple of years. And then we have 23 Savage, you know, who has been at the top of the uh, of the carries, maybe even in the, uh, in the world, but in Southeast Asia, definitely. How would you compare the two? Oh, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because as, as far as Gabby goes, like, I think he has been underperforming recently, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much of that could just be like a wariness about having had a couple of years of this behind him and not, you know, 
feeling and I I have no good way to say it is respectfully so I'll just say like Gabby thinks he's cool but oh. at some point you just get tired of constantly being the cool guy all the time and I don't think 23 Savage is done being the cool guy just yet and that for me feels like the big difference it's, it's an attitude oh okay okay so 23 Savage currently you know he uh, he is cool Gabby thinks he's cool that's uh coming from kips who has uh, worked in the southeast asia region so she does have a little bit of more insight there gabby work, hopefully work with him and his hair <laughs> yeah hopefully gabby you know he finds his humbleness because today he has been very good but we're gonna be seeing a ta we've seen makoto play this one we've seen 23 savage play this one so we really yep. don't know where it's gonna go but uh if i would have to put my money on it i would uh i would think makoto because they have mostly played it in the mid they have great combination with the Tusk, right, for the minus armor. Um, I do think that there's a bunch of heroes that can make this lane really hard still in the pool. Prime among them, the Viper. I'm not sure if Fnatic is the kind of team that would be running the Viper in that mid lane. Um, and I also think that this Templar Assassin is reading something into the support, uh, uh, the carries that have been banned here, because Fnatic have taken out the Slark and the Spectre, right? And mm -hmm. to me, that smells like they want to pick up some kind of fragile backliner that doesn't want to be jumped, you know, go towards the drow uh, sniper kind of thing. And then the Templar Assassin is a phenomenal matchup to jump that. And Elder Titan, yeah, we are going hard on this minus armor. Oh man, Fnatic, they're gonna be in a world of hurt. They need some armor here or at least need to keep their distance. I like the, uh, uh, the sniper that you mentioned in this game. Only the Tusk is a problem for you, and you have two ways with the Shard to get yourself over the uh, Shards. There is going to be a Phoenix coming out, and this is a solid Phoenix pick. I mean, the supports don't do anything to you. TA doesn't love playing against you, neither does the Nature's Prophet. They have some attack speed and range heroes, but against the Pango and the Magnus, I don't really think you're killing this egg. No, I don't think so either, and of course, if the Earth Splitter comes out, like you, you have a very easy way to survive, which is pressing R. Um, and really turning a team fight that will probably be initiated by them. Although, now that I look at it, like between Bangus and Pangolier, right? There's a lot of engagement and playmaking potential on Fnatic itself. Um, there is. There definitely is, though. I still think they're a little bit on the slower side. Even though you do have heroes that, ki that are somewhat mobile, they can move around the map. Uh... I still always, you know, see Magnus farming his first item, Pango. Uh, he can maybe rotate, but Rubik okay. likes to uh, stay, create a little bit of uh, farm gap there between him and the other supports, Phoenix too. And then I think that is giving the timing for Talon to hit all of their times, you know, the deaths on the TA, the Roches and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see how Fnatic are going to be uh, approaching this one in terms of slowing down the timings of Talon. Yeah, absolutely, because Talon also need those first items to come online, but they scale deeper. I don't, of course, want to say that anybody ever scales deeper than a Magnus, because RP is a threat at all stages of the game, including, you know, the two-hour game. But I do think that they get a lot more stats out of items and levels and a lot more damage, and Fnatic is definitely more utility-minded in that regard. And I should put a big damage dealer on top of this, for sure. Like, that's, that's what this last pick is going to come down to. Uh, let's see uh, what they'll get here. It is They do have a minute of uh, reserve time. Uh, the carries were banned, so Fnatic, they think this is not going to be an HS Prophet in, uh, in a position one. Even though he could be, would lane well with both the Tusk and the Elder Titan, I wouldn't find either. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any preferences here? For me, um, let's see, because you're most likely going to be up versus a Magnus Phoenix? Hmm... I honestly either of them would be good though I really do like the nature's prophet tusk just for the kill potential but both of them can escape from your shards so maybe you just use the elder titan you put the tusk on the off lane get him an actual active role in this game get him roaming not stuck on that lane and we go in for the puck I mean not too phenomenal versus the rubik like puck hates the instant lift of course but apart from that stopping the pangolier from uh, rolling uh, AoE Silence versus the Phoenix. Really good evasive capabilities for a lineup that otherwise doesn't offer very much hard lockdown. Yeah, that's that's a good pick there. Yeah, that's a solid one. I'm just afraid that the Pango with the Shard is still not something you can catch easy. But he will be dying to the right clicks after, you know, minute 20. So there's not really going to be a huge gap where... Uh, 
where he's going to be safe in, in any way. So now when you see this one, you need a uh, carry most likely, but it might be a position one Magnus. Is there uh, is one there nine. anything that comes to mind? Um, wh What do you think about your good friend Troll Warlord, Harry? I'm always in favor of it because it is an offlane nature's oh, profit. Right. So I would, mm -hmm. uh, I would actually love it. I wouldn't love it in a the sense they don't have a lot of lockdown on Fnatic. They have a little bit, but you know, not not a perfect amount. But in terms mm -hmm. of troll standing in front, Phoenix healing him, just being that overwhelming force, I like it. And for that to happen, you need a good lane against the nature's profit. That's what you're gonna get. And uh, well, yeah, we uh, wishful thinking <laughs> there coming through, but yeah. uh, it's not gonna be happening. It is not going to be happening, but Fnatic, I do like this more than the troll, honestly. I was baiting you a little bit with that, because let's face it, if you go slow in this game, like you have two pretty greedy cores yourself already, you need damage to come on top of that. Um, you can't really be waiting for a troll with potentially a battle fury to farm his way up. So we have a, a triple medium core draft, I would say, from Fnatic that's really not going to scale as deep as Talon does. But the amount of just raw firepower that they're going to bring on the map after their, you know, their item 1, item 2 are up is quite considerable. And if either the Pango or the Magnus ever create a fight opportunity, then the Dawnbreaker can just come in. And we've seen KP in the previous game, it's not like he's not going to create some of those opportunities himself. Yeah, and he's very good against the TA, he's very good against the Nature's Prophet. Again, they're a little bit lacking in the uh, catching the puck department, but I guess you're just gonna have to live with that. You have solid tankiness on your side, puck might not be able to uh, to kill people that easily. So I'm, uh, I'm okay with this one. I actually like what Fnatic have to offer. Yeah, same. I mean, I'm just worried about their, their armor situation. Like, if they don't properly space themselves out in this team fight if they're forced to focus fire which with the like the short ranges on their heroes they might just be then one elder titan stomp into a splitter into 23 jumping in is going to be absolutely devastating uh, that is uh, that is definitely true so kips we're seeing the draft you said at the start of the series that talon is your favorite game number one when you see the uh the heroes does that change mm. I think Talon's game could be a little bit too slow, but they have this um, this sense of time behind them, right? I do think they come out on top in the end, and Fnatic has always looked a little shaky when they're the ones on the clock. So in the end, that is what's going to make the decision for me here. I think that Talon has a very strong reactive lineup. I think Fnatic, Fnatic are always a little bit uncomfortable going first. Um, I, I favor Talon. Um, hmm... I'm torn here. I really am. On one side, Talon, overall, before that lower bracket final, I'd say they win maybe even 3-0 against anyone in the mm -hmm. uh, in the grand finals. And then He's Fnatic really... Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Fnatic, they, they showed up in that previous series. And now, yep. I see their draft as actually able to, if played properly, counter what Talon have, because you have the Dawnbreaker to counter the uh, the split push of the uh, of the Nature's Prophet. You have the timing to counter the timing of the TA, prevent her from taking the first and the second Roche and just crushing that completely. You uh, have the late game capabilities if you're slightly ahead or even to win the team fights. Uh, I'm actually gonna go for Fnatic here. I. Yep. Uh, I like their lineup just slightly more. For me, this Puck is an X factor because he cannot be caught. I think if Mikoto creates space or just by jumping around the mid lane, not dying whilst doing so, and the side lanes get pushed in, the Talon hits the perfect timing on the TA and they win. But I do think that Fnatic have tools to kill him and that they're going to catch him maybe once or twice and, uh, and prevent that from happening. So I'm, uh, I'm going to go for the dire side. All right. Well, uh, I think we both at very least agree on one thing. Mikoto has to have a really good game here. Like this puck is not going to have the easiest time. Not too many easy targets. He's always going to have to bring one or two helping hands in in order to actually have enough damage. But on the other hand, yeah, I I don't think he has to die this game at yep. all. That would be very very unfortunate if indeed he he would cop those one or two losses, and that, that, that it might just literally get down to that. Uh, if if I'm Gabby in this game, I'm getting uh, 
my blink relatively early and I'm killing the puck. That's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and if he if he manages to do it, it's gonna be great. You know how many games we've seen those Ember Spirits once the mid lane tower falls and they're just constantly at your tier two in the mid lane, forcing rotations, forcing rotations. I feel like that's what Mikoto is gonna do. And if you don't punish him for it, you are gonna lose the game. So I'm uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, to everything in this game. This is looking like it's uh, like it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, it, it could be a scorcher for sure. And that's uh, that's what we are looking for. It is a grand final. We don't want talent, you know. Like we are a major team. We're gonna slap everybody here who want them to be uh, to be pushed back just a little bit, and we'll see if Fnatic are a team that can make it happen. This is the Kips. Now this is officially the last series. Fnatic as an organization will be playing in Dota in quite some time. Tears, yeah. hold them back. Hold them back for now. Oh, no. We can uh, we can shed a few once the uh, series is I have over. Too much makeup on. I won't cry. Ah uh, yeah, that. I've. <laughs> I don't know how uh, how you do it, right? How do girls do it? How do they keep the tears in in these emotional situations? That's of course because men are uh, much more emotional than uh, than the girls. We all know it. And uh, Talon, three runes for them. So uh, very nice start there. Some extra clicks on to Gabby. Why not? Of course, Gabby is. Let's let's be very real here. Not a slouch on this uh, position one Magnus at all. This man played a lot of it during the heyday. He's uh, he's got that nice golden medal to show for it. This he's going to farm like a monster this game. Like, if anybody is going to be keeping pace or overtaking a Nature's Prophet TA, which is a very greedy lineup, I wonder how there's going to be enough to farm on the map for both of them. Frankly. Is gonna be Gabby. And also you have a uh, Tusk and a Elder Titan. You know, Elder Titan can stack two camps at once, but for a Tusk, he needs to use a lot of mana to do so there with the shards. And even then, you might uh, you might miss something. So uh, we'll we'll see if these uh, if these supports from Talon will be getting the stacks off because they're probably gonna be very very important. But yeah, as you mentioned in one of the series that we casted, Magnus is just a beast when it comes to farming, and he is he has two very uh, far more into heroes on the other side but we'll see who comes out ahead yep, absolutely and if you if you don't get to be big enough that both of them are afraid of you you could still end up in the place where they have two farmed heroes you only have one and you can't be both places at once and you're still gonna lose heroes that's uh, definitely the case. Mid lane, Puck versus the Pango. We haven't seen a lot of Puck in this uh, in this meta, so uh, I'm not used to seeing the hero against the Pango. How does the uh, the matchup go in general? The match in general is pretty pretty even Stevens. Like both of them are going to be spamming out their spells in order to push this wave out, try to secure the runes, and a lot of it is dependent on the puck holding the face shift to dodge most of the swashbuckle like armel's going to be able to push the waves with that but he should not be hitting the puck and therefore most of his harass damage won't actually come out yeah, and that's why Mikoto will be getting an early point in phase shift. Nice call there, so he doesn't want to be uh, taking any unnecessary damage. And now he's going to be going for the uh, rune on top there. Mikoto will be able to secure it. Both of the uh, players already have their bottles, so no surprises there. Bottom lane, this to me looks like the uh, the most likely <laughs> kill lane. And I'm hoping we uh, we get a lot of blood here. I am not sure how happy 23 Savage would be with that, but certainly uh, KP and DJ are more than up to that task. We'll see. He uh, does have some minus armor with the meld, and if this uh, Elder Titan starts punching people, it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of pain. KP running away, bam! Yeah, we know how much that hurts, KP. We can feel your pain as well, but overall, mm -hmm. no one on the uh, map is getting low. No one is getting close to dying. They want to start off the Grand Finals here very, very slowly on both sides. And... I think that I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue at least a little longer because we've talked about this in the draft, but every single hero, every single core hero on this map especially wants to have an item, one and a half items before they really get active. The only exception being uh, maybe Mikoto with the, uh, the TP rotations for the ult. And of course, uh, Armel might uh, want to dive from time to time with his ult as well, but that's about it. 
Q is actually diving, you know, speaking of, he's on the top lane, the, mm -hmm. uh, the tower will start attacking him. Gabby's actually dropping quite low here. Um, like, multiple times, his HP was, like, at 100. Of course, he's a Magnus. He's, uh, gonna be getting to, towards his half, half of his HP, and that is actually, uh, quite enough, it seems, to, uh, to be able to continue to lane. But overall, he is, uh, he's not having as good of a time as his uh, core or a carry counterpart on the other side of the map. First for the mag, as the levels keep rolling in, he is going to be doing better and better, and a lot of these extra treants are going to be going his way. And especially now Phoenix level 3, that's a significant increase in damage from a fifth, for, from 20 to 40, so double. It used to be 15.35, so it used to be even more than double, but still the damage is uh, is gonna be quite nice here for uh, Januel and Talon. When, uh, when the levels come in, as you mentioned, things do become easier. And there's a first skewer back at the game, and he's on Gabby actually, that's gonna cost him his life. Uh, Januel, go fly! Fly, my friend, if you want to get the kill. That was super close for Januel to, uh, to uh, go down there, but he wanted to give the kill to the Magnus. In the end, <laughs> not going to be happening. He's threatening there with the TP, and Januel, he's fine. Yeah. He just got to make himself this. Oh, look at that! Yep. Not even coil used. Not even needed. I think they were both level 5, and he uh, he just got level 6 off of that kill. And also, QTPs to the mid lane, so that's Cure on top lane going down. It was all planned because he knew that Mikoto was gonna be a god in the mid lane. Slap Armel back to the base, and now he gets his bottle refill, so he's gonna be continuing to do super well here. And they might kill him again. Armel needs to be careful. It play is all this time. Oh, Armel, you cannot die. He does have the shield crash. Stomp is not going to be connecting. Swashbuckle in four seconds. They're going in with the silence. One more connection of a spell. Armel to the side. The orb, it's not going to connect. It's way too slow. And uh, Mikoto, he's very mad at Ice Frog that he nerfed that uh, a couple of months ago, maybe even more. But it's, uh, it's not going to be a kill. It is not, but I think you're right on one thing, which is that this play was completely planned. I think Makoto went for as big of a trade as possible, as aggressive of a trade as possible on Armel, as soon as he saw that he would be getting uh, a refill from the bottle anyway. Okay, so Talon are doing really well in the lanes, which needed to be done because of their greed. There is going to be a little bit of timing with they're just farming. So if you have good lanes, if you're able to take down towers early, you're going to be super happy. And that's going to be the case. Look at top lane jabs already getting yeah. this tower super low and uh, they it's get the puck on the top lane. Yep, Gabby, he is gone. Jabs gets the kill and the tower will follow immediately after. And as a Magnus, like you have the three levels in Empower, you can easily move into the jungle here, but this is a big loss of terrain really early on. Yeah, true, and it is going to be opening up potential rotations to the mid lane. If the mid lane tower falls early, that is going to be a huge problem for Fnatic, and yeah, they looked good against Blacklist, but against Talon here in the early game, Fnatic are getting crushed. Absolutely. We have another rolling thunder for a little opportunistic kill on Q. Mm. Nice <laughs> attempt with the shards, but Armel, way too good. He was expecting that one. And so the pressure of Fnatic is going to most likely have to come from this offlane. And we have level 6 over on KP just now, but he's not going to be able to naturally push uh, through this lane himself. Infinity Savage. Level 7, looking really good with the full refraction levels. He is not an easy target to take down by any means. So even a rotation from Armel might not necessarily guarantee the kill with the amount of counter initiation that Talon can bring into that lane. Uh, KP trying to uh, apply some pressure, but he is uh, nowhere close to, uh, to killing this guy. He might actually die himself. He is yep. gone. KP, uh, one more hit. Dead. 23 Savage, way too good. Fnatic are coming with a smoke. I think you're a bit late. Yeah, that too is supposed to be like, okay, you pressure him a little, you trade a little, he maybe comes forward too far and we're going to smoke into him, but yeah, they are too late. At least they might get Q again here, yeah. Lift him over his own ice shards. But they're... <laughs> 
Ah, be careful. Uh, Q got the perfect amount oh. of experience for level 4. Uh, not any longer now. The creeps will top lane. Jabs. Dead. Nicely done by Fnatic. At least they get something. P. Into KP coming over. And he gets a little full charge of Empower as a souvenir. Now look at Armel. He's preparing for something innocent. Watch buckle. They're being used. They're diving the Rubik with the minus armor. DJ is not going to be living for long. And he's dead there. 23 gets the kill. Now, Rolling Thunder, you're a bit too deep, aren't you? Far away from home. But no problem. We're going to be sending you back immediately. 23 Savage, though, he's running away. He's not allowing himself to be brought down. Finally, it's going to be the Fade Ball that finishes him off. DJ with the buyback. He does turn it around. And Magnus, not an easy one to kill. Jabs is standing his ground. He just died to your RP and you are not gonna get the revenge. Gabby gets himself away. He's being followed by trees and Mikoto will finally get a kill but at what cost? You put yourself in a really bad position my friend Mikoto will get slapped down. DJ with a buyback gets two. Is a really big deal. That's all three cores over on the side of Talon. Down for the count. To wipe. Especially, yeah, the KP getting himself alive throughout all of that involved in all of those kills that is the playmaker over on your side that's the your big backup that's huge yeah for sure luckily they got the magnus there in the end imagine what kind of a disaster it would have been if gabby Oof. survived but he does not he's now working towards his echo saber talent three of their cores even after a team wipe are topping the network chart showing just how fast these heroes accumulate farm um, we're going to see the Witchblade for Mikoto, of course, so his lack of damage is going to be well compensated by that. But of course, he doesn't exactly get prime farming space to uh, build that one up. He's going to have to go towards the danger zone of bot lane because 20 Savage is going to be commanding the triangle. Jabs is going to be on top lane. Uh, speaking about danger zones, Oli is in one, but he does get his spirit back and gets to run off a cliff there. He's sent down. He's uh, looking like he's gonna be living for a little bit longer. The stomp onto the two of them, going to sleep. There is gonna be a swashbuckle in a second. That's a hasted pango that is not gonna be letting this one go. They will get their kill, but it'll take a lot of time. Meanwhile, a lot bigger kill will be going into the hands of Talon. Action everywhere. They want the Phoenix. He's gonna break the coil, but that just means that his wings will be broken as well. No reason to use the egg there. It would have been taken down and Mikoto gets a double. And that is exactly the puck gameplay that I wanted to see there. They play towards KP, so they play towards the uh, the global hero, which is what you need to do. Remember that from the Spectre, uh, from Nature's Prophet as well. Like, you can't bring the backup in if you are killing the backup. Well, uh, that, that is true. That they get that tower on board. And with the puck, they actually have pretty good catch, so they will be able to do it. And Mikoto, well, mm -hmm. with the double kill, will be finishing off the Witchblade, so the damage now is going to be coming in. Exactly. Uh, you're going to need that because this Rubik has refraction. <laughs> yeah. It's, he's not an easy one to uh, to bring down. He has uh, found out some secrets of the temple, so... Uh, Templar Assassin not being able to, uh, to keep those for now, so Rubik will have some ways of surviving. Armel? This is pretty positive thinking Broken? there, Armel. Oh, I have a Solar Guardian to protect me. Well, uh, not really going to do anything for you, KP. He's a little bit too deep right now. Does have the mech, so he's going to be surviving a little bit longer, though not for too long. He was actually contemplating not using it there because he doesn't want to be beat up any longer than he thinks. Maybe I can survive here. Jonel, he's sleeping. We'll be taking down Mikoto. Gets him down, and DJ, you have a refraction. That just means that we punch even more. He, he took the orb, and he's trying to get out. No, he's going to be dying, but it's still going to be Gabby getting something in return. Now he is surrounded. It was a T-Y. For Fnatic, now it's gonna be going the other way around. Slay the Rhino. He doesn't have any more sticks, and all he wants to punch. He wants to punch more. Gabby's running away, begging for his life. You're not gonna kill me, and he lives. He is limping away after an absolute drubbing talent there. That I don't know exactly what Armel was thinking, but at least if it's only him. It would have been sort of fine, and instead the entire conga line of Fnatic follows after him, and they just fall one by one to the superior right to the damage of Talon. I actually think it was the entirety of Fnatic that were thinking the same thing, because he went to the high ground instantly, Solar Guardian, but it's not like you're the tankiest of the bunch. Plus, you're up against the puck, you have nothing to defend yourself with currently.
Not looking good for Fnatic here, Kips. They are farming. At least that is going to be fine. But they lost two of their tier ones. And this mid lane, I mean, it can be attacked from any angle because of it now. Exactly. And it doesn't really matter where on the map you lose the fight because Jabs doesn't care. He'll come right on over. That's fine by him. So I think the item that is going to be really important here is indeed that early blink dagger for Gabby. He's got it queued up before the BKB. And I think he's correct to do that because you, you just don't have the time. And speaking of items, the biggest item timing now is coming for 23 Savage. He has had a really nice game thus far, only dying very deep in enemy territory. And the Deso is there, the damage output of the TA, insane. Absolutely. And he's got the shard queued up as well. I wonder if he feels good enough to take that early again, because a silence would absolutely decimate Fnatic. None of these heroes do anything when they have uh, the trap silence on them. Oh, definitely. I've seen so many TAs go for it, so I think that uh, he's going to be buying it 100%. They take down the mid lane tower. No access points for Fnatic other than their outpost for the Roche. And uh, Talon, they say, yeah, you have no access points. We're going in for that one. Dangerous territory, though, because Gabby has a blink. That is exactly the timing, and they're going to be smoking for it now. KP makes his way over. This is the situation where you might expect early buybacks to even come into play. Because if they lose this Roche, it's going to be almost impossible to come back from it. And Talon are not going to tempt fate? Yeah, no reason to do so right now. Imagine if you lose the fight there, you're going to be throwing your lead away completely. And you mm -hmm. have a pretty big one currently. 3k gold, 50 minutes in, not negligible. And of course, the uh, map control lead, that is even more important. Yeah, it's huge. And let's not forget that they have a 4k lead now over a Magnus, which is a hero that needs to be ahead. They found the TA. That is a very dead TA. 23 Savage, you might not die in the Roche pit, but you'll die next to your tower. And you're thinking about going for Ollie. The chase might be on there. He did get the sleep in the back line, but it's not going to save his life either way. Q jumps in. They don't have buybacks. I don't know if you can clean this fight up. Actually, a puck with a double damage. He might be able to. They finish off DJ. Now he's going to be poking a bit, but on the other side, Jabs has been far. Get into here. It is going to be surrounded by four heroes, but look at the puck. Look at what he's doing to the Mikoto. Stop it. They just can't take it any longer. They're gonna start begging for Mercy Pango. Silence stop. Gone. That's gonna be a triple. Give me an ultra. This Phoenix is in the air. But I control the skies. KP gets a double kill, leaving the puck alone. Mikoto, can he do enough damage? No. And the Phoenix will be out as well. A bloodbath in the mid lane. And who comes out ahead? Mikoto. <laughs> yep. Certainly no other winners than him here, though. Well, I, I gotta say that Fnatic, even though they lose two cores on that dive there, they did almost bring down the mid tower and they got a very important slowdown on 23 Savage. So that's certainly not bad for them. But what is bad is that now they've used most of their team fight spells, they've used a lot of their opportunities. They, they're coming to run at this Roche pit again. They're not crazy, they know exactly what's going on, but they won't have RP just yet. Can they uh, do anything? The uh, they're trying, they're doing their best. The stomp will be used. Armel, he has the rolling thunder. You better go into the pit because 23 Savage, he is in there. Actually, that's going to be a great one. They're going for him. The Roche bashed him and they're no going to smash his head in as well. He doesn't have a buyback. This is not looking good, but look at KP. He's trapped inside of the pit. Does have the cardio grief to keep himself safe. He's going to be punched. Still alive. Jabs has been caught. He's gone. Jonuel will be dying there to the coil damage. Not the break one, but just the initial of it. Mikoto, think about going in again. He does have a good rune here, but the haste will expire. So no more buffs for you. Going in onto Dawnbreaker. Mikoto is just destroying all of them. Now he might be taking a bit more damage than he can uh, live through. The stomp. It's okay. very hard to go for this one. Roche is dead and they get the Aegis Q. Yes, we did want the bonus. Thank you for offering yourself. I'm not a bonus. I came here to kill. He will be dropping down, but not before he finishes off KP. I don't think I've ever seen an unluckier Roche bash than that one. At least not in the last year or so. <laughs> he was about to kill it. Yeah, that was so unfortunate. And instead they have to just wait out his entire respawn timer without including his damage, without having any like good angle on that fight either, of course, because they were all sitting around that pit. Fnatic had the perfect chance to spread out, make sure that that puck doesn't really get to clump and hit all of them together. And sure, Mikoto gets the pickoffs. Like, he still has a phenomenal game here, and he's just going to go. Yeah, he's going to go in Sanjin Kaya, or at least uh, the Kaya to start off with. 
Uh, this puck is uh, is a problem in fights, but there is a much yes. bigger problem, a huge one on the other side. A big woolly mammoth controlled by Gabby, mm. who now has an Aegis and is going for an Orchid, so that's going to be a way to deal with the puck. Yes. I was wondering if I should suggest that, but then I was like, yeah, go on, Magnus Orchid, really? <laughs> but yes, actually, says Gabby, Magnus Orchid. Is that is one of the benefits from these heroes that just farm, 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 much like in Nature's Prophet, is you can build whatever your team needs on them. Um, Don't well face checking the high ground. Uh, very rarely uh, does that work out too well for you as a, as a support, so you will be taken down. I mean, sometimes you just have no other options. So, uh, Armel in the mid lane, being somewhat aggressive, but the traps, they see everything. They're just showing every little bit of information to Talon so they don't get caught. And pretty soon those traps will be silencing as well, but not just yet, because 23 Savage, he is still at the top of the net worth. That, like, he should have had this BKB finished by now. He could have probably had that shard now as well, if not for those two deaths. And Demogard Fnatic has done a phenomenal job keeping him down. Yeah, awesome job coming out from Fnatic. Level 20 coming out. It is going to be an invis for the Pango. He's ready for a fight. He's uh, thinking about a, a, a Blink Dagger now, and he's going to have that one finished fairly soon. But he does have a shard, so no longer will the uh, will the coil be a problem for him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll on up. And get out of there. Smoke. There's also a Blink Dagger over on DJ. They have so much mobility at the ready right now. Over and traps. They're, they're running for 23 again. Yeah, no, no, way, no way did they get him a third time. No BKB. Okay, I. this looks like a dead 23 Savage. Q is looking at him thinking about a yeah. snowball saves. You're on your own. Use your high MMR to get out of that one, but not going to be happening there. Surrounded by five heroes. MMR is just the number, and Fnatic are going to be showing that here to Talon, who are still in the lead, but they're losing fights. Shots, three kills. It is like they have a tracker on him. Yep, we know where you are. We know how you move. And we have prepared for you. The egg will get dropped. It means the jabs cannot TP. Of course you cannot TP because there's an RP and a stun from an egg and a clap. From a Magnus, just enough damage there. Mikoto is thinking about joining the fight, but he cannot kill a Magnus and he cannot go that deep in. Doesn't want to put his life in any kind of jeopardy. Fnatic are ahead. Mm -hmm. Finally drag that net worth back over. I, I seem to recall a game like two days ago, three days ago, where I was yelling at Fnatic to just use their spells. Oh, they're using that RP liberally. And now Rubik only just dies, but I think that still costs him the tusk. Well, let's see, is it gonna be a one for one? Yeah, that looks like a very dead hero. Slam to the ground for both of these, but Pango is gonna be slightly faster to claim the kill. Careful there, Makoto, you're playing with fire. That Orchid is up. Nice, he's not even close. Yeah, I'm just kidding. If, he, if that Orchid came out, that would have been perfect, but he responds with a phase shift. That is some... Uh, that is some focus on the puck, for sure. Yeah. Hey, Mikoto knows that this game could be could be all his, right? And this is the kind of game where you'd love to show that off. And he is immediately he was he had enough money to finish the Sanjinkaya, but instead he says, Alright, there's an orchid. I think I'm going to start prepping for that Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, he uh We'll see. Is it gonna be a Lincoln's? Is it maybe gonna be a Yule skips? Is there a chance for Yules here? Yules, yes actually. He's flying the career out. Okay, that's the easier solution. Though, not exactly the uh, the scaling solution, I'd say. Wind Waker, save from the uh, Magnus ulti. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see if it does come to that point in this game. Talon are in a smoke, and they're again hunting for the one that will uh, connect. But KP now is much more tankier with the Halberd. Not an easy target. Nope. And the uh, tankiness of that Halberd goes double, of course, because you will be disarming 23 Savage, and he will have a hard time adding to the damage. Uh, that's three range cores, none of which want to be building into a uh, MKB, maybe later on on the uh, TA on the Nature's Prophet, but a five second disarm, five second of you not being able to attack in a fight, that is a lot, that is something that can cost you, so I really like the itemization here from Dawn. 
full heals up on Mikoto, so at the very least he is not under threat anymore. Or at least not as much threat by that Orchid. But he has definitely been slowed down by it, and now he's going into the Aeon Disc as well, so double defensive. He says, I'm not going to be dealing with damage, I just want to be alive. Being alive is damage. Though of course for a Spellcaster it goes a little less than for, let's say, uh, a proper right-click hero, right? Because you're always reliant on these cycles of spells instead of on just... <laughs> they found eight. jabs there. Mm -hmm. These traps from the Rubik are actually a big deal. You're not expecting them. It did expire on him, but he still has quite a lot of those on the map. Super annoying. Let's see. Triangle stolen here. Fnatic, they're controlling the map. Yeah, they're doing it very well. They There's three very greedy cores over on Talon, and right now there's just not enough farm for all of them. Magnus does get the silence onto Q, is gonna be fine. DJ there showing off his wall response, but he's gonna be dying right after it. Jonuel in a good position to use the egg, but actually they're running away. So much damage being done, and Phoenix is gonna cool off there with the snowball. So it is gonna be two for zero, Talon. They finally find themselves a fight, and actually when they can get the damage in, Fnatic cannot stand their ground. And they're immediately striking back by diving deep. Um, can they get this kill? I guess uh, so. There's no help nearby. The Earth Splitter is gonna be doing too much. He's trying to get himself out and he will Ooh. jump into the air just before the stomp comes through. The ground will be breaking on both where he left and where he arrived. Though the, uh, it will not be coming from the same source. Uh, look at the gold lead, Kips. It's dead even right now. Any favorites when the game is like this? When the game is like this? Fnatic yep. with the extra maneuverability, yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. Absolutely. And there's gonna be an Aghanim Scepter over on KP in not too long, and that, especially the evasion of uh, added while the Solar Guardian is in the air is going to be huge, because that's just literally most of Talon's burst damage output. If they go on somebody and the Solar Guardian comes out immediately, I don't think you bring him down. Yeah, and it is evasion. It is not blind, so it's not like if you're staying inside of it, you are uh, gonna be missing. So with the BKB, you'll be fine. No, you need an MKB. You need the Bloodthorn talent. They currently have neither. Gaps. There is, however, also a point booster and an Ogre Axe over on the Elder Titan currently. Oh, so we're getting a third core, are we? Sorry, a fourth core on the side of fourth Talon. Core. I mean, my, my problem with that is that it's another uh, another right-clicking core, right? But yeah, the, the damage output of an Elder Titan, especially with like these fights, can become very clustered. You can hit a lot of people with that Astral Spirit. You might just get an enormous amount of damage out of that. See if it, if it does come to that point, that would be very awesome, very huge, of course, against the Phoenix Egg. That's not going to be helping you too much. And also, we can already see a Ghost Scepter on the on the Phoenix, so Jonwell, he just wants to live. Yep. And presumably there will also be a Shard up on the Rubik, really depends on what he wants to buy there, whether that's going to be the, the Ghost Scepter first, or indeed that save for your teammates. I do think that this is a... Pretty dang great shard game, though. I, he should probably favor that, in my opinion. You not gonna be caught by the Rolling Thunder, but it is gonna be caught by the Magna Silence that brought down DJ. Gets the kill like a good Rubik he is. Yep, and that's full Bloodthorn on Gabby, by the way. So this damage, especially if they focus fire, is going to be nuts. 21, 21 in terms of kills. They're gonna go for the RP. Goodbye, he's gone. Ho oh, ho, what's with the damage there? The Bloodthorn is insane. Wow. Gone with the blast wave. Absolutely no chance whatsoever. And Talon suddenly is reduced to just shoving these side waves. Like, that's what their lineup wants to do, right? But we haven't really seen anything out of Mikoto since he bought that Yule Scepter. And that just means they're going to be losing terrain in the middle. Um, they're going to be losing vision in the middle of the map. They're going to be under pressure until that rush respawns. And that is right about now. Both teams know. Uh, you're the uh, you're the Radiant side and you haven't taken a tier 2, which means 
But still the Dara holds a slight advantage there over, over the pit. They still have a tier one of the top lane talent. That is gonna be a nice access point. They're gonna be fighting it. Bottom lane jabs, wants to go for a TP. Swashbuckle was already used, so no bashes are gonna be coming through. And Januel will be dropping down. That is just before the Roche spawns. They have a trap inside of that one, so Fnatic no. And they did lose that Phoenix as well, so maybe this is an opportunity for Talon, though. I think that after last time, they feel uh, pretty doubtful about going into the pit themselves. That trap, it hasn't been taken down. They don't see it. This sentry isn't going to be deep enough, so... The side of Fnatic, they're going to know. They're going to know clearly, like, what HP of the Roche there is. They're coming over. is outside of the pit on the cliff ready to counter initiate oh, here comes the rolling thunder the, uh, oh, the shards yeah bashing him there another bash 23 oh, savage very unlucky he needs some help let's watch there he gets the Aegis but he doesn't get the roach will be getting the shard no it seems like it's the pango who stole that one and 23 savage he's gonna lose that one just as well that he picked it up and the solar guardian it is gonna be landing you will not move the buyback from the Tusk. they need to save but look at him he has been disarmed he cannot attack he doesn't have his weapons and the rpd on this one say one but it's not gonna be saving golly who's gonna be slapped to death by gabby they do lose dj but it's a small price to pay gabby he's dropping low he needs to get himself out of that one with the buyback of dj there are now five on fanatic jump in from the tusk dawnbreaker slow down a little bit you really want to fight big boy let's see if you can handle a lady this big kp will get pushed back there with the snowball he'll be fine he comes in with the sun but no that egg it is gone actually with the bash this is gonna be enough no he does get the kill but gabby he will pay with his life there is no way you're getting out of this one even with the traps mikoto coming over to maybe do something for his team armel will be dropping low mikoto is beyond gone like he gets himself out he's playing like a boss but it is not enough it's certainly not enough but dj in that fight the he kept the puck out of it for so long especially at the end there mikoto just has to work around him and in the meantime his cores are dying they have absolutely no saves whatsoever for their ta who is caught with four heroes on top of him again and there's just absolutely nothing they can do to get him out of trouble. There's, there's no four staffs for, available for him. Everybody's got blinks and PKBs and items to defend themselves. Okay, go lead for Fnatic. This game is still close, but that is a second Roche that you're not going to be using to advance your net worth. The TA lineups, it is dropping off now, especially look at 23 Savage. He is sixth. He's sixth on the network chart, Kips, behind the Pango. Okay, now he's going to be uh, going a bit uh, up there, but still very underfarmed. He is, and this is where I'm like really worried about the fact that this Puck, who we both said is going to be a really important factor in this game, went for such defensive itemization, like really counting on the rest of his cores to deal the damage, but the, the rest of Talon's cores don't get to deal the damage. They're too busy getting punched in the face by this overfarmed Magnus. And Mikoto is just sort of hopping around the outside of the fight, being like, oh, guys, I'm, I'm alive. Yes. I'm doing it. I'm so, yeah. doing it. <laughs> yeah. but... Okay, haste. Sanj and Kaya. And an overwhelming blink in the works. Mikoto needs to start putting in the work. He is approaching level 25 also. Once he has that, then Rolling Thunder n is no longer a spell. Yep. And neither are the PKBs of Fnatic. So they might have to think twice about focus firing 23 Savage like that again. But yeah, he's, he's finishing up his own Hurricane Pike. Finally, he's like, well, none of you are going to save me? Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, in a childish voice there. We'll see if uh, we don't know if he thought it in that same way. But might be the case. <laughs> Fanatic. They're smoked up. Armel, the smoke breaks, immediately gets on stop. He cannot die, but he's not gonna because they're gonna have the RP come together and die together. Actually, the BKBs are gonna be protecting them. 23 Savage completely fine. He's gonna be losing his BKB. He doesn't have his force staff any longer. The snowball save, it is gonna be keeping him alive. DJ did go down and they're gonna go with the stomp. TA still alive. They will not allow him to fall. That's level 20 on the Nature's Prophet. You cannot roll through that one. And TA is now coming back to deal the damage. You wanted me. Now you got me. His Team finally protects him. He just needed that little bit of push there with the Hurricane Pike, and it's gonna be enough. And that was really all it took to go from getting team wiped to no, nearly no, no, no. team wiping yourself.
And sometimes it's really that easy. Make sure that they have to exhaust all of their chasing options and suddenly you can see Fnatic turning tail and running. Because the amount of right click damage that comes in from different angles is too much to handle. I just like winning. Pango is just not a... <laughs> he's becoming a non-factor now with a uh, Sprout Leashes and imagine what's gonna be happening with a level 25 of the puck. If 23 Savage doesn't get the BKB off though, before the RP, he is gone. The fight is probably gone. Oh, yeah. But that chase, because of the BKB, it just pulls Fnatic so deep in. Yeah, and it took him just a little too long. One more touch from Gabi there. And that fight's over. And I wonder if they still get out, right? That's the thing. They had to chase really deeply as well. I'm sure Talon would have gotten a couple of kills there anyway, but the fact that they actually get 23 Savage, not just alive but also involved really makes a ton of difference especially in taking down this rex it's a 5k goalie now by talon they took down the rex as you mentioned they are definitely ahead at this point magnus wants a double rp he needs it he saw in the previous fight that they need more lockdown and it's not going to be coming out from the pango armel i don't know if you even use your rolling thunder any longer if you get in those trees you're not getting out not uh, at the very least there is a save over on dj though so he can always take somebody out of that sprout but you need to not be bkb you need to not be magic immune so that your support can do that and that's uh, a risky proposition as well kp he doesn't have any magic immunity will be able to remove the silence there being healed up by the phoenix who will be fine those are the uh shards there for the uh Oh, he's going in. Jabs. He's very deep, but he cannot attack through the Solar Guardian. It will be protected. You're not getting out of this one. Jabs, did you really think that was going to work? Now, they're coming forward. Armel, he knows he cannot be leashed any longer. He has the uh, the freedom to do nothing because he won't be able to do anything there. Mikoto has the ult. will remove the silence. Aeon Disc is still available. It's not going to be popped. A nice stomp there onto the three of them. Our Talon going to go forward. Yes, but they're going to take it easy. KP gets through the trees, but you cannot get through the shards. You're going to stand in place as you die. Actually, they're missing way too many hits. Magnus jumped in, and the RP is going to come through, but he dies immediately. Who's going to do the damage? KP says it's going to be me, but through the snowball. Everybody is saved. Let's go together. 23 Savage doing so much damage. They need to go through the refraction charges. They're going. They're burning. But he is still alive. Another snowball save. Oh, they're just not gonna die. They're so easily. Actually, that was from Rubik. He tried to save his buddies. Not gonna be too successful with it. He does have the Fable. He gets the kill. The support stay alive. And 23 Savage is not, just not strong enough to live. Phoenix, the only one left in this world. He doesn't have a TP. He's probably gonna be just another casualty there. Actually, he will dive away and survive. And you could see Talon focus, focus, focus. There were several opportunities where I thought they were going to jump in, but they respect that RP. They are so scared that they're going to get in a position where indeed Q can't snowball save them when that comes out. And their patience is rewarded because they do get it off. And once again, even though they lose the TA there, they get so many important kills. Jabs is alive. Mi Mi <laughs> Mikoto. Three is a bird. Uh, well, uh, you know, we had some uh, words about his items, but I don't think anyone is going to be saying anything to Mikoto after this kind of a performance. He only died once in this game. Defensive items are what's going to be keeping him alive. It's what's going to be allowing him to just continue crushing it in these fights. Like, now that they're getting the fights again, yeah, that, that looks a lot better. And he's probably very happy that he has them. And now just one Rax between Talon and Megas. And finally, they have the proper overwhelming gold lead that they wanted from the start. Of course, this is 37 minutes. 11k does, now does not mean as much as it would at, say, 25 minutes. But I think you're feeling comfortable. Uh, you probably are, especially with two lanes of rags down. Top lane doesn't have a tower. Roche is going to be spawning in a minute and 40 seconds. There is still a Rubik trap in there. So Fnatic, they will know when it spawns unless Talon do something about it. That same trap from before. Yep. Use mana, get killed. It's a trap. Use mana, get killed. Oh, it's so easy. Um, there's a Nullifar on the Nature's Prophet, so these Ghost Scepters from the supports, 
Not gonna be that important in fights. What is gonna be important, Kips, is the buybacks. But even if Fnatic use them, how do they rejoin the fight? Hard to say. They're going to have to retake that top side of the map and see if they can get their outpost back. And they haven't controlled the uh, the radiant outpost in a long time either. Silence on the puck. Stay on this. Popped. Mikoto. Let me find the stomp. Is going to be connecting on KP. That should be that for this engagement. Surprised that he doesn't try to save his Aeon disc there with the uh, deals. But I guess he felt that maybe he didn't have enough time. He was taking enough damage already? I'm not sure. Hey, Aghanim Scepter. On to Ollie. That man slaps. I just had it in the, uh, the previous fight though. Didn't really get to attack way too much, but he was still deep in. But now he has the uh, 25 Astral Spirit Hero damage. So it's, uh, it's gonna be even more damage for him. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that one. Actually, when I look at Talon, I don't want any of their heroes to punch me. No, no, that seems like a good way to, you know, break your jaw. Yeah, to get your jaw broken by these uh, beasts on the uh, on the Talon side. Armel did go for the Rolling Thunder, got spooked there from something. Don't, don't really know what, what it was, but uh, he will be using that one, so they don't have it for a fight. This should be a free Roche. KP is running in like a madman. Does have a buyback, so even if he dies, he can rejoin the fight, and he's buying some time for his team to come over. Yeah, uh, does Talon know that Rolling Thunder got expended there? Sure. Silence on the puck as the old Solar Guardian gonna be used. The puck is gonna be completely fine. The stomp connects. Here comes the Earth Splitter, and it's gonna be doing so much to the Magnus. He has the BKB. You have to pop it, pop it now, or you die. Actually, he didn't want to use it. He does have a buyback. They're gonna be going for KP, who has a buyback as well, but no way to rejoin the fight. As we said, actually, they did take the outpost. They will be coming back soon. Puck in the back line, going for the Rubik. He wants to slay the support. Protected by the Magnus. You're protecting nothing. Actually, the Ghost after keeping alive. The puck is dead. No. No, he's not. The Rubik is dead. Puck is full HP. Jonuel is going to be using the Ogre Seal Totem to go closer to his enemies. Magnus has been caught. He needs to get out of this one. Finally pops the BKB. He's being shredded by these two. The physical damage is insane. Fnatic, they've lost this one. It's over. It is. And they're tipping Mikoto because, yeah, that, that was absolutely the beastly puck game that Talon needed to get out on top. And it was, it was pretty close there. I was getting nervous. You could hear me criticizing his item build because I'm like, oh lord, he's not doing enough. Harry's gonna win this one. But <laughs> in the end, their scaling works out. In the end, I I guess Fnatic somewhere along the line lost that tracker that they'd stuck to the back of 23 Savage. And after they stopped finding, you know, the direct kills on him, that game got hard. Yeah, that was... Uh... But that was some beastly performance coming out from the puck, really. I mean, I don't know what to say. He was everywhere in that fight. I couldn't keep track of him. I have to only, uh, I mean, be feeling sorry for Fnatic, really, because he was everywhere. You can't kill him, and he's slowly but surely doing all of this damage, and in the end, you just die. I mean, he did 47,000 damage. The closest one was Jabs with 42, and then the next one on the map was 22 on 23 Savage. Just goes to show how much Mikoto did in that fight. He survived, he killed, he did everything for his team, and Kips in the end, Talon will, uh, will get the win. I mean, looking towards the... Uh, the future of this grand finals. The Fan can Fnatic get a game? Talon are looking clean. They are looking clean, but it was really not that easy for them here. Like mm -hmm. that, that mid game from Fnatic definitely looked very solid as well. The ways that they challenged the Roshans uh, kept TA completely off of having any impact in this game until they really couldn't hold her back any longer. Like that. That took a long time, and I'm sure that if Fnatic keep on bringing this same constructive attitude to the next couple of maps, Talon has to be clean for three series in a row. And I'm not sure if they can hold on to that. That's a lot of concentration required. Yeah, we'll see, Talon, if you can do it. This game, it was amazing from them. Fnatic, they did strike back a couple of times, took the first throw. They, uh... 
in the second one. They took the Aegis immediately. In the end, it was not good enough to beat Talon. A team that is gonna be going to the Major in just a couple of days will not lose the game number one of this Best of Five Grand Finals, but it is only game number one. You need to win two more if you want the title of the champion here at the BTS Pro Series. But with that being said, we're gonna go on to a short break and await game number two.